So in this learning objective, we're gonna again talk about combining rational expressions, but now we're gonna do the one that requires a little bit more work, and that is adding and subtracting rational expressions. All right, so the most important thing with always when you're talking about adding and subtracting fractions is you need to get the denominators the same first. All right, so it's called getting a common denominator. All right, that's the most important thing to remember when you're adding and subtracting multiplication and division. Those are more straightforward because you just go across the top and across the bottom. All right, but you need to do this step first before you do anything with uh, adding or subtracting. All right, so we're slowly going to build up the examples. We're going to start with numbers, slowly add in x's and more rational expressions. So just a reminder of how do we find a rational, or sorry, a common denominator. We don't have an equal sign, so the only thing we can do is just manipulate the uh, expression in a way that keeps it the same. And the way we do that with fractions is if we multiply the top and bottom of the fraction by the same number. All right, this thing here is equal to one. And if you multiply anything by one, it doesn't change the value. So if I multiply something by the same thing on the top and bottom, it's gonna be the same value. And I'm gonna do that on the left-hand side as well. Again, on the top and bottom have to be the same thing because that's one and doesn't change the uh, expression that I'm actually talking about. All right, so again, multipl multiplication straight across to the top, four times three is 12. Four times five is 20. Five times one is five. Four times five is 20. All right, again, this is always the, the simplest way of getting a common denominator is you take this denominator and multiply it on the other side. You take your other denominator and multiply it by the left end one. And that guarantees that you have a four and a five and a four and a five. So it guarantees that the denominators are the same. And then now you have a common denominator, you just add the tops. So 12 plus five is 17 over that single common denominator. All right, so this 20 just squishes together into one fraction. All right, so that's something you know how to do. I was there a review of how you do it. All right, the kind of tricks to get a common denominator and then the rule for adding that you just add the tops, the numerators. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing, except for we're gonna do it with uh, some X's involved. So again, the first thing we have to do is get the bottom of these fractions to be the same. So you're gonna take this four over here and multiply the left-hand side by four. We're gonna take this X plus one here and multiply the, the right-hand fraction by X plus one. So on the top, we're gonna get four times X is four X. On the bottom, one thing I'll always do on the bottom is leave it factored for now and we'll kind of see why in a bit, All right? But that's minus the top. 3 times x plus 1 is going to be 3x plus 3. And I will distribute that in, and we'll see why in a second. On the bottom, I'm going to leave it factored, or separate it 4 times x plus 1. And now that I have the common denominator, now I want to combine the tops. So remember, we're doing 4x minus 3x plus 3. All right, this minus is being applied to the whole second fraction. So I can think about this minus sign. I'm going to do 4x minus 3x and minus three. All right, so this negative is kind of going to distribute into both of those pieces, and it's going to end up giving me four x minus three x is a single x, and then minus three is negative three. All right, and that's our final answer. So here's the reason why I have to distribute on the top here is because I need to combine like terms when I combine on the top. So I want to distribute and multiply everything along the top of my fraction. On the bottom of my fraction, I don't need to combine anything, so I can leave them separated because now when I get to this step, right, in this case, it ends up being the final answer, but sometimes maybe you can simplify your fraction by canceling things out. For instance, just imagine if this had been ended up being an x plus one on the top, then I could cancel out the x plus one and that x plus one, and I could simplify my fraction. All right, so by not multiplying on the bottom, it just might make the simplifying step easier. Right, so let's look at this problem. Again, thinking about how to, we wanna add fractions, so we need to get a common denominator, and then how do we make our life as easy as possible along the way? So the first thing is getting common denominators, not much we can do other than multiply the right-hand fraction by the left denominator, multiply the left fraction by the right denominator. All right, again, on the top, Eventually, I'm going to have to combine a bunch of stuff. So on the top, I have to multiply these together. When I multiply these together, I have to FOIL. So it's going to be x squared minus x minus 2x minus 3x 
negative one and negative two is plus two. All right, so you FOIL the top and you get that. The bottom, again, the bottom I don't have to combine with anything, so I wanna leave these separate because it might make the ending part easier. X plus two times X minus three. Again, you have the FOIL because you're multiplying these binomials together. This is X squared plus two X minus three S is minus six and then minus six. And leave these separate on the bottom because that might make your life easier. Now, in this case, it's addition, so it's a little bit easier when you're adding because uh, you just do the uh, exactly what you see. You don't have to worry about distributing a negative or anything like that. So x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Minus 3x and minus 4x is minus 4x. 2 plus negative 6 is minus 4. All over x minus 1 times x minus all right, so that is the right answer in terms of it being uh, combined by adding the fractions, but maybe we can simplify. So one thing we can do on the top is all these numbers are even, so I could factor out a two. And then I look at that quadratic and see if it's possible to factor. If it'd be possible to factor, I'd have to find two numbers that multiply to negative two and also add the negative two. I mean, if you think about that, that's not possible. So this is actually our final answer. All right, either one of these is fine as your final answer. All right, there's not possible to factor. Actually, right, so you can't cancel out any common things. All right, but again, same processes with numbers. Now you just have to remember things that we've done before. All right, getting the common denominator by multiplying, making sure you FOIL when you multiply these types of things together, and then again, like we did in the last learning objective, seeing if you can simplify at the end. I will do one more example before I have you try one on your own. Again, the only difference with this one is now we have this quadratic on the bottom. So we could just go ahead, multiply the right-hand side by the entire denominator, multiply the left-hand side by the other denominator, the same thing we've done in the last three examples. But always think ahead to kind of make your life as easy as possible. This left-hand fraction, it's possible to factor as x minus 1 times x minus 1. Actually, it's not possible to factor. Let's just change this to a plus sign to make it actually work out. And then this other one is x minus 1. All right, so change this to a plus sign. And then now I can factor it as x minus 1 times x minus 1. And you'll see that this left-hand fraction has two copies of x minus one, and the right-hand fraction already has one copy, so we don't need to multiply both fractions in this case. We only need to multiply the right-hand fraction by x minus one over x minus one, because then that'll give me the two copies of x minus one on the right. All right, so always try to figure out ways to make your life as simple as possible. If you didn't do this step, it means you have to do a lot of simplifying at the end of the process. All right, so figuring out the smallest thing you can multiply by early on will make your life a little bit easier. Right, but by factoring this, I see it's just two copies of x minus one. Save myself some time. So now the left-hand one, I don't have to change at all. Oops. And the right-hand one is gonna become, I have to distribute on the top, so I'm gonna get 3x minus three. On the bottom, again, keep them separate. And now I combine them, Again, I'm subtracting, so this negative sign is gonna end up distributing to everything in that right-hand Fraction, so I'm gonna get x minus 3x is negative 2x, and then minus negative 3 is plus 3. All right, and there's no factoring I can do here to cancel anything out, so this is our final answer. All right, so only thing this example added was that sometimes if you think ahead, you might be able to multiply by less and save yourself time. All right, here I only need to multiply the right-hand fraction to get my common denominator. All right, so here's one for you to try on your own. All right, subtract these two fractions. And here's the solution I came up with. So again, first step, this x plus 3, multiply it on the right-hand side. This x plus 2, multiply it on the left-hand side, and that guarantees that the bottoms of these two fractions here are the same. I FOIL out the top, so when I FOIL out x plus 2 times x plus 1, I get that. FOIL out x minus 3 times x plus 3, I get x squared minus 9. And the most common mistake I can kind of envision is forgetting this negative sign 
distributes to both of these. So I get minus x squared. So x squared minus x squared goes away. 3x is the only x term, so that's just going to stay. And then 2 minus negative 9, that turns into a plus 9. So 2 plus 9 is 11. All right, so the most common mistake I could imagine is you having 3x minus 7 on the top there. Right, but because that negative distributes, you get 3x plus 11. And again, there's no factor you can do to cancel out. All right, so that's your final answer there. All right, so on the skill check, you just have to do uh, add one pair of rationals and subtract another. So it's just two problems. Right, but again, these require a fair amount of work of multiplying and foiling and factoring and all that stuff. All right, and canceling things out. All right, so just one problem where you add and one problem where you subtract. And the one thing when you're doing the subtracting problem, make sure that negative distributes. All right, both problems are going to have variables in the denominator. So more like the second half of examples we did rather than the first half of examples. All right, but that's a, a decent amount of work. So two problems are exactly what we did in this video.